On the night of April 14th to 15th, 1912, the most modern and unsinkable ship collided with an iceberg and sunk. And it was incredibly scary. Just imagine a huge cruise ship, several times the size of the Statue of Liberty, crashing into a massive chunk of ice and sinking. It's dark and cold. All you can hear is the rumbling and grinding of breaking metal and wood. All that surrounds you is the icy waters of the endless Atlantic Ocean. There's almost no connection with the outside world. There are no phones or internet. Nobody else on the whole planet knows that the ship is sinking. It's a real nightmare. But the most shocking thing is that the people who were on the Titanic that day didn't panic. They were calm, maybe a little worried, but there was no fear on their faces. To understand why they weren't afraid during one of the biggest disasters of the 20th century, you need to see what was going on through their eyes. So, you're a passenger on the infamous ocean liner. Your cabin is located on one of the top decks of the ship. You've just had a great time with your friends at dinner. Now musicians are playing a beautiful melody. Waiters are serving dessert. You go out onto the deck and enjoy the tranquility of the mighty ocean. At this moment, you feel an incredible sense of security and comfort. You're proud that you're one of the first people in the world to travel on the most high-tech ship on the planet. You go to bed in your cabin and wake up because a crew member gently knocks on your door and asks you to go to the deck. There's some kind of issue, but there's no reason to panic. No problem. You'll be happy to go out and take a look at the night sky. The moment when the ship collided with the iceberg felt like nothing more than a slight push, and some passengers didn't even hear it. They realized that something was wrong only when stewards knocked on their doors and asked them to go outside. You're on the deck. There are already a lot of people here. Everyone is more or less calm. Passengers are talking about what might have happened. Listening to the conversations around you, you figure out that the ship is supposedly sinking. <laughs> the idea seems like nonsense to you. But even if it is true, all passengers will be evacuated in lifeboats anyway. At that time, people didn't know there were half as many rescue boats as needed. Passengers were sure that everyone would be saved. Evacuation begins. Women and children go first. No one panics or tries to get into a boat before it's their turn. All men behave gentlemanly and help crew members to evacuate women. One passenger wants to get into the boat with his wife, but it's not because he's afraid to stay on the Titanic. He's just worried. It seems to him that it's less safe in the boat than on the giant liner. He doesn't want to leave his wife alone, but the crew members explain the situation to him and the man retreats without any resistance. They begin to launch flares into the air. No one pays any attention to this. Everyone thinks this is a standard procedure for a ship breakdown. If there had been many experienced travelers on board, they would have understood the flares were fired because the ship was in distress. Perhaps then, people would have started panicking, but most of the passengers simply didn't notice it. The boats are lowered one by one. People are watching the evacuation, patiently waiting for their turn. There is no pushing or crowding. Nobody is screaming. The actions of the crew help the passengers to remain calm. They deliberately downplay the severity of the situation to prevent panic. Someone says the boats are launched simply as a precaution. Also, the crew members claim that a rescue ship is heading for the Titanic and is just a few miles away. Some passengers say they see the lights of another ship. The people who are already sitting in the boats want to stay closer to the Titanic, since this way they'll feel safer. Many passengers simply don't want to believe that something serious is happening. Even when they're told the ship is sinking, they refuse to admit it. How is it possible that the unsinkable ship can sink? But this is how the human mind works. In extreme situations, it refuses to believe that something bad is going to happen now. You don't even want to think about it. One of the passengers says that it seems to her that the danger is exaggerated. She claims that all people will return to the Titanic at any moment. Some passengers are afraid, and still, they don't want to leave the ship. Warm cabins and the safest ship in the world are here. The alternative is the ice-cold ocean and small, unstable rescue boats. Someone refuses to leave the ship because they can't find their baggage. Some passengers carry all their belongings with them. They don't want to leave them on the sinking ship. There are many immigrants on board, and some of them don't even understand English. The crew members can't explain to them what's happening. 
These passengers misunderstand stewards' instructions during the evacuation. They can't figure out the inscriptions on the evacuation signs. Many passengers are sure there's been some kind of breakdown in the engine compartment. The problem will be solved soon, and the Titanic will continue its journey. People only start to realize that the ship is going down when it begins tilting forward, and its rear part starts rising above the water. That's when those around you start panicking. Some jump into the water, others climb into the lifeboats without waiting in line. But in general, there's no chaos and hysteria. And this is despite the fact that there are about 1,500 people on the ship. Scientists claim that some of them never even left their cabins. Those people refused to leave their stuff behind and didn't believe that something serious had happened. During the evacuation, the orchestra is playing. This helps people to keep their cool. They hear music, and it seems to them that everything will be fine. The music keeps playing on the Titanic almost until the very end. At about 2.05 a.m., the crew lowers the last boat with passengers. Fifteen minutes later, the ship goes underwater. Even after the tragedy, the surviving passengers can't really understand what's happened to them. They remember boarding the boats and moving away from the huge vessel, and they won't forget seeing it go under the water. But even after a while, they still can't realize what a terrible catastrophe they've just experienced. Sometime later, people began to write books about those fateful events. They made documentaries and feature films. The news about the Titanic was in every newspaper. It spread all over the world. In any description of that day, the tragedy looks like a terrible disaster. But those who were there admit they didn't feel all-consuming dread. They just couldn't believe what was happening that day. The tragedy of the Titanic might seem more terrible for people who heard about it than for people who experienced it. Many people around the world refused to go on board large ocean liners after the catastrophe. They were afraid of what could happen to them. At the same time, a lot of passengers who survived on the Titanic continued to travel by other ships. There was a woman who survived three shipwrecks, including the Titanic, and she still continued traveling. And what if people tried to raise the Titanic from the sea floor? This happened many years after the shipwreck. Then, the $5 million operation failed. Nylon slings were attached to a large part of the sunken ship. The other ends of the slings were connected to diesel engines. For the entire operation, a mini-submarine was used. A piece of the Titanic, weighing 21 tons, was being pulled up when one of the slings tore. And then, one by one, the other cables began to snap too. The huge piece of the ship fell back to the seafloor. By that time, the participants of the rescue operation had run out of food supplies. And since the nearest shore was quite far away, they decided not to give it another try.